Welcome to the channel. In this series, we are building a quarter scale version of a new boat design that we've done called Temptress. And that's what you can see next to me here. The previous video, we were doing um, epoxy coating of all the parts ahead of doing a big glue up for the boat. Uh, so in this video, we're gonna take a look at some of the elements and how that epoxy coating kind of works with the glue up stage when it comes to actually fixing parts in place. So um, let's take a look around the boat and we'll get started. So as you can see, we've got parts epoxy coated and I've actually reassembled the boat. I've um, re-dry fit all these joints, put everything back together. The main reason for that was because I took this to a show last week and um, had it on display and I kind of messed up really with the timing of stripping it down and um, realized that I probably should have just left it together and taken it uncoated. But that has inadvertently kind of shown me quite a good way to do things actually. It was my intention to prep all of the parts and then do a glue up as I put things back together. But I realized, you know, we're kind of threading these frames onto the stringers and uh, jiggling things around. Trying to do that whilst epoxy and stuff together would actually be um, a pretty big nightmare. So I think the way that I've done this inadvertently is actually a better route to go. So um, I think what I'm going to suggest is that you do a dry fit of everything again Put everything all back together like this and then what i'm going to do is just take um segments out one at a time and then glue them in place so doing it this way just gives you the opportunity to just like clear out any little joint um tolerances so where we've got epoxy within this joint now you know you might need to just file that out a little bit to get the frame to clear it again um, and just tweak things it allows you to put stuff back on the strong back again and just check the lines check that the legs are all still in the same position uh, these legs should be pretty permanently fixed now so um, screwed to the rungs or glued as you can see i've run little fillets of uh, glue down the sides of them so this gives you your final kind of double check opportunity to go around and make sure that you're happy with the positioning of everything make sure that it's all correct and double check that uh, nothing's shifted and you're happy with it then um, one at a time, we're just gonna cherry pick items, take them out, prep them up, and glue them back in place for their um, permanent position. So the first one we're gonna do that on is frame nine. So let's get started with that. So we're getting ready to glue frame nine in place, and um, there's a kind of, there's a range of different ways that you could possibly approach this here, really. And it depends on how much work you want further down the line. Now you could completely key up all of these components. When you turn the boat back over, that means that you're going to be ready to just straight away apply like a satin varnish or something on top of the keyed epoxy. That's going to be uh, quite a nice little treat when it comes to turning the boat over, um, as there'll be very little work to do. Alternatively, you can just key up mating faces. For example, the transition between the, um, the framework and the bulkhead, you can key those up and just do it around the glue joints. So you know there's gonna be tiny little fillets in here around where the um, parts notch into the stringers and things like that. Depends how much work you want further down the line. If you wanna go all out at this stage, the nice thing is that you've got really good access to all the parts at the moment. So you could sand every single face of the epoxy and um, do that on a bench in a nice controlled environment without having to crawl around inside the boat. And then when it comes to uh, um, finishing the inside, it's all gonna be ready to go. Obviously I've got uh, some stuff in place here, so I haven't keyed up the stringers. Um, what I'm gonna do is just do that as we go through and um, you know, we've still got fairly good access to parts at the moment. So um, what I'm gonna do is just key up the mating faces and um, get parts glued in one at a time. Things like bulkheads, it's really good to be able to pull them out of this stage and just DA the whole surface off. It's gonna be a lot more tricky to do that inside the boat further down the line. But um, re with regards to frame faces, I think I will probably just scratch those up. So we'll do a little bit more keying. We wanna just um, sand these areas around the stringers and uh, key up anything that is basically gonna be in the vicinity of a joint that we're gonna be gluing at the moment, which is mostly gonna be around these two uh, stringer notches. So let's get and prep those. So you wanna be using a pretty coarse sandpaper for this. Um, I would say 150 grit maximum. I'm using an 80 grit here. We wanna really key up that epoxy nice and heavily so that it's got a good hold to, uh, to bond to. Epoxy is gonna bond fine to itself providing it is heavily keyed. So I'm gonna be using 80 grit. Yeah. 
Okay, so that's what we're looking to key up. Any area that is going to be in, uh, you know, glued in contact with um, with epoxy wants to be scratched up nicely. Uh, you can see I've done a small section on the frame there, either side, so that's going to cover um, where we are in the stringers. Uh, in all honesty, I'm not really sure uh, what's the best way to go, how far to go here. I'm kind of inclined to think that actually keying up every surface before this stage um, might be a good idea right now. I don't really know, I'm a little bit torn. Um, the way I've always done it is just kind of keying up the areas that I'm working in, but I'm actually starting to think maybe sanding all of this off the boat might be the better route. I don't know, let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you think it's best to kind of sand bits now before I put them in uh, entirely or um, just do the bare minimum? It's part of the learning process, we'll see what works. Uh, so we're ready to, um, to do a glue up on that now. So um, everything's keyed in relation to where there's gonna be glue joints. As you know, if you've been watching the series, I've been doing this with different glues throughout up until now. I am gonna use epoxy now because there's no real other way for me to show you this. And because I'm bonding epoxy um, coated parts together, you really wanna be using epoxy for that. I can't really start using tight bond to, uh, to do this and move the process along. So I am now gonna show you how you would do it on the full size boat. And um, yeah, let's get some mixed up. So down at the epoxy station, there are a range of additives that West System make. Uh, if you guys are working with epoxy, then you will almost certainly recognize most of these. Um, the West System range is really versatile with epoxy and by adding various different additives, it can allow you to create a glue or a coating uh, product that will suit your application. So um, we've got a range of different things available to us. Now, what we're gonna do with Temptress is we're gonna have a wood finish on the inside. It's gonna be a varnished wood finish. So we wanna be using something like this filleting blend for that one. The filleting blend is a kind of uh, wood flower sort of uh, finish. So it's got various different additives in there. I don't actually know what it's made up from, but its primary um, purpose is for filleting and glue joints um, in a scenario where you need a, uh, a kind of wood finish that's gonna look natural. So there's various different things we could use for this, like colloidal silica, for example. That's a really good kind of general uh, glue up additive, but it's white in appearance. So I've got it here in my little uh, cereal dispenser, which I use for my kind of everyday uh, quick dispensing of, of additives. So colloidal silica is this one, it's a glass uh, silica powder but it gives you a white glue, so you don't really want to use that in finish applications. It will yellow over time, and it won't look particularly nice on a varnished finish. That's fine if you're painting the inside of the boat, you can absolutely use that for that. Um, we've got all the various different ones. I won't go into all of those now. We'll, uh, we'll use them at some point. So we're gonna use a filleting blend to get us a wood-colored uh, glue. And what I tend to do if I'm working with mahogany is I will mix that and color it a little bit further with some of this, which is my own customization one. This is basically just a mahogany dust that's been harvested from the belt sander at some stage when I've been belt sanding mahogany. And um, that just gives me a fine mahogany powder. So a little drop of that in with the mix will just darken things off and color it to, uh, to what we want. It looks kind of like a scoop of uh, espresso or something, doesn't it? But uh, you wouldn't want to be drinking that. So one pump of epoxy. Now my uh, metering pump dispenses equal measures of both of those at the same time, which is really nice and convenient. We're not gonna be using a great deal of this to, uh, to glue that up. So just one pump's gonna be fine for that frame. Wanna make sure that that's mixed really thoroughly. Scraping around the outside of the cup as we go, just to make sure that there isn't any unmixed product that's left there. When I'm happy that the two parts of the resin are uh, completely mixed, we can add the additive. Now, as a general rule of thumb, for one pump of epoxy, you're gonna wanna put in one scoop of the additive. Now, my metering pump dispenses the same volume of epoxy that you'll get if you're using the individual pumps that go into the tins. So um, that roughly equates to one of these per one pump. Now, because I'm gonna put some of the mahogany in as well, I'm gonna go slightly less. So we're gonna just put a bit of that out and we're gonna be slightly under. You don't need a lot of that mahogany, 
dust in there to color it. So we'll stir this in. And there you go, you can see the kind of consistency that that's given us, which is about what we want. But it's a little bit light in color, so this would be ideal if you're working with spruce or um, birch plywood, something like that. But uh, it's a little bit light for what we want, so we're going to just put a dash of that mahogany dust in there as well. Just a tiny little bit, as I say, you don't need a great deal. There you go, you can see what we're looking for. Fairly firm sort of glue mixture, around about the right color for our timber that we've got. So we're ready to glue that frame in place. Okay, so we can start applying the glue. We're gonna get plenty inside this stringer notch here. And be quite meticulous about coating all faces. Now you can, need to kind of remember the, uh, the two-step bonding process that we've used at um, several stages throughout this. So if you're gluing end grain or anything particularly absorbent, such as plywood um, that hasn't already been coated, you need to coat that with unthickened epoxy first. So just bear in mind that if you have end grain sections inside the ends of these stringer notches that haven't got uh, coated during the coating process, then um, you need to wet those out with unthickened epoxy first. Uh, if they've already been coated and uh, keyed up, then that's fine. You can leave them as they are. So I'm trying to work towards getting to a place where I can get a full size temptress build underway and do a, a complete YouTube series that documents that uh, project and uh, teaches it to people that want to learn the process and just shows it to people that are just interested to watch that happen. There are a number of things that I've got underway at the moment uh, which I'll let you guys know about fairly soon and we'll try to put things in place to make that happen. Uh, but right now I've got a, uh, a patron set up. So if you guys wanna take a look at that and see uh, some additional ways that you can help to support the channel and help that happen and help me to make more videos like this, then uh, take a look at the patron and there's a few additional benefits for, uh, for people in there that are able to offer a bit of support. So take a look, I'd very much appreciate it. Okay, so that is frame nine glued up. Now, another real benefit to this pre-coating uh, epoxy phase is when it comes to cleanup, it really makes things nice. So when you've got big areas that squeeze out like this, you know, you can just run that in with your finger, create a neat little fillet in there, all around the edge of that frame. This is a uh, decidedly more fiddly on quart scale than it would be on the real boat. But this is a kind of example of how you can get things really clean. So normally if you would, if you did this kind of process, you get this sort of squeeze out from here around the fillet area. If this was uncoated plywood, what you then get is in the face of that plywood, you get this filler additive. So where we've got the, the brown color mixed in with that, that ends up kind of pushed all the way up into the grain of your plywood. And then you end up with, um, you know, trying to sand that out. If you're trying to get this to a neat finish further down the line, you're trying to sand that color out. You're never really going to get it out of that grain. So you end up with sort of dirty looking fillets um, with marking all around the area. Because this is already pre-sealed with, uh, with epoxy, it's not penetrating into the wood grain. It's just going into that epoxy. So we can wipe that off really neatly. You can get a bit of uh, paper towel in there. and you can clean up that joint. And um, you can see we've got a bit of a sort of mark in here, but that's only where that's just wetted out the, uh, the keyed up stuff. It's not actually gonna uh, stain the wood as such. So um, 
that's another benefit to, to pre-coating, certainly the internal parts. When we're trying to get this boat to look really neat and smart on the inside, that's really gonna help. And um, it means that now when we come to coating, we just gotta lightly scratch up this area, you know, where we've got fresh epoxy on there and uh, we're gonna have a nice clean finish. So I'll continue uh, cleaning up that frame and then we'll take a look at it. So you can see an example here of when we just key up small sections how uh, using this process can get you a really neat finish actually so we've got squeeze out in this joint we've got keyed up epoxy just back to here and the same on our frame so if we fill it this little joint in here what you can see that we get as as we spread that epoxy out over the keyed area here and then we wipe it back up with a cloth You can see it effectively kind of refinishes this area here where the uh, where the string is keyed up and then we're back to what we had in the rest of the uh, surface anyway so it's a really neat way of uh, of just kind of blending all that in we're not going to be getting any staining on this bit of plywood on the side of the stringer so we get a really nice neat finish and uh, more than anything else this pre-coating process really helps with that so all we've got to do in this area now is just give that a light scratch up before we um, put the top coat on it and a couple of coats of satin varnish and that'll be done, that'll be finished. So that's um, quite a nice little process, I feel. This is one of the reasons I'm a little bit torn on whether or not to completely sand all of the parts because actually when you get to that stage, um, everything all looks really nice and neat and um, it's quite a good point to get to rather than keying everything up. And um, as I said, I'm just gonna want a light little scratch when we get on the inside before we uh, put any further finishes on it. So. I'm still kind of torn, I don't really know which way to go right now. Okay, so that's frame nine done and glued up in the boat. It's nice to be finally sticking some bits in place um, that we're not gonna have to take back out again. They're kind of set in stone now, which is pretty cool. Um, that process is gonna be exactly the same for all the, all the other frames as well. We're just gonna key up in the areas that need it. Um, you've seen how the bulkheads and the frames go together. So I shall follow that glue up process uh, throughout all the additional frames. I'm not gonna show them in this video because it's just going to be much the same and I'm trying to keep these things fairly uh, punctual and moved along without too much of the same stuff. So I will get cracking on that and uh, in the next video we're going to look at gluing the keel into place, gluing the stem into place and then doing some work to get the chines um, set in and positioned because if you remember from the chines video there's still um, bevels to do to get that chine into place and a little bit of trimming work and things to get it sat just right. So we'll do that in the next video. Once those are all in place, we're then going to be looking to start to, uh, to bevel off all the framework, to bevel off these stringers. You can see where they're proud at the moment, and the keel and the stem, things like that. So we'll probably do a, a big beveling video after that. And then we'll be um, probably progressing on to putting the bottom on the boat. So that's going to be pretty cool. We're going to do a fully cold molded bottom on this uh, model, the same as it would be done on the full size boat. And uh, I'll try as best as I can to show you the exact process. So we'll even do some things like vacuum bagging as well to show the, uh, the cold molding process. So that should be a good bit of fun when we get around to that. So thanks for watching the video. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one. Cheers, guys.